Hey YouTube, this is Alexander, and you may or may not have heard, but the first developer preview for the next major version of Android, Android N, was released earlier this week, so let's take a look. Now the Android N developer preview is available for the Nexus 6, 5X, 6P, 9, Nexus Player, Pixel C, and General Mobile 4G, which is an Android One device. Now getting the developer preview on your device is much easier this year than last. Just visit the Android Beta Program website from Google, which I'll have a link down below, and they'll send you an OTA update as soon as you register or enroll your device straight to your device, and there's no hassle with command prompts or ADB or anything like that. So the first really noticeable and obvious changes are the notifications and quick toggles. The notifications are no longer just small cards with some dividing space between them. Notifications have been overhauled and look big, bright, and arguably more clean. You can still expand to contract the notifications with a two finger swipe on them, but Google has added a small arrow that you can press for the same function. Now I'm not sure how I feel about this since I'd imagine it'd be easy to accidentally click on the notification when you meant to expand or contract it, but I guess we'll have to wait and see if they improve upon it somehow or just remove it entirely. Google has also added an API for developers to easily take advantage of Quick Reply. Now Quick Reply has also gotten a facelift which will make it look much better once apps like Hangouts, Messenger, and other third-party apps are updated to support it. There's also a much better clear all button which has replaced the ambiguous clear all symbol in Android Marshmallow. Just above the notifications, there are some Samsung-esque quick toggles. Now, even though they do look like a page right out of TouchWiz, I really do like them. They're clean looking and make turning things like Wi-Fi and Bluetooth on and off quicker. If you'd like access to all the quick toggles though, you simply swipe down once more or hit that arrow off to the right side. Here you'll see all the available quick toggles, but there are two main differences between these and marshmallows. First, pressing on things like Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and battery will bring up a small menu styled page to view available connections or more info as well as just to turn it on or off. Second, the toggles are now paginated, so anything that doesn't fit on the first page will be moved onto a second page. There's also now an edit button front and center to easily change which toggles are available as well as where they are. Moving on, yes, there is an app drawer, so those rumors turned out to be false, at least for the first beta. There's still a possibility that Google will remove it by the final version, but I have my doubts. Speaking of apps, Android N has altered the multitasking menu a bit and now supports split screen mode. The cards that appear for each app in multitasking are now much bigger, allowing you to see much more of the app. Now this is something I'll definitely have to get used to since I really like the small compact cards in Marshmallow, but seeing more of each app doesn't hurt either. Anyway, accessing split screen mode can be done a couple different ways. First, you can hit the multitasking icon to bring up all the apps and then just tap and hold the header on one of them and drag it up to the top, then choose the bottom app from the list. The second way is to already be inside an app, then long press the multitasking button and choose the app you want to open from the list. You also have the ability to resize each app and turn it into landscape mode if you so wish. Now the settings has gotten a slight makeover as well. The first thing you'll notice is the suggestions up top. This area will do things like suggest that you change your wallpaper, add a lock screen, or tell you what notification mode you're in. I'm not sure I care for this, but it's easy enough to get rid of it with a swipe. You'll also notice that under each section name is some more info such as the name of the Wi-Fi network you're connected to, your Bluetooth status, how much data you've used, how much battery you have left, and more. I see how this could be useful to somebody, but I think it just makes it look more cluttered, so I personally don't care for it, but I get its potential appeal. Anyway, not much has changed here, but sound and notification have been split up into two different sections. The battery area looks a little different. Oh, and there's this slide out navigation menu. It might be useful if you're deep into the settings and want to quickly jump to another area of the settings, but I think for now it looks pretty strange. I'm just not sure that it works here at the moment, but maybe Google has something planned for it in the future. Now, just as an Android Marshmallow, the System UI Tuner has made a comeback with a few new goodies for us. It's still enabled the same way with a long press on the cog icon up in the quick toggle section. So here we have the newly added options for color and appearance, do not disturb, and an other section. Color and appearance houses a really awesome night mode that I'm sure we've all been waiting for. However, right now, it seems to be the most buggy feature in the preview for me, but I can't wait for this to be fixed up and added in the final release if it isn't removed by then. There's also an option to calibrate the display. The Do Not Disturb section has the option to show the Do Not Disturb mode with the volume controls as you adjust the volume and use the volume buttons to enter or exit Do Not Disturb, kind of like how Marshmallow does right now. And finally, inside Other, there's an option to disable the timeout mode that appears after pressing the multitasking button twice in a row, access split screen mode with a swipe up on the multitasking while you're in an app, and something called Show Full Important Settings. Anyway, that's pretty much it for the major features though. There's also some smaller ones like Data Saver that will allow you to restrict specific apps from using 
using up too much data, new animations in the clock, allowing an alarm to override do not disturb mode, and Doze now works when the screen is off, but when the device is still moving to help save even more battery life. Now since this is the first developer preview, it's pretty buggy and I wouldn't recommend anyone use this as their daily driver, but I'm pretty excited for it. I hope you all enjoyed the video and let me know what your favorite feature is from Android N and what you think it might be called, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.